Last week, a good friend of mine named Joe Greer released his first photo book, NYC I Love You, which is a collection of photos he's made over the last few years while living in New York City. To give a little bit more insight into the book, we decided to sit down and just have an open conversation. It wasn't really a structured interview. It was really just giving Joe a chance to kind of talk a little bit more freely and openly about making the book and what it meant to him, especially given everything that's happening right now and how it's affected New York City and as he's about to leave. So I'm not going to waste too much time. Let's just get right into it. Joe, I appreciate you uh, sitting down to talk about this book of yours, man. I'm really excited for it. Thanks. Thank you so much, Father Day. It is good to be <laughs> in your presence, and uh, I'm glad we get to chat um, via Zoom, man. This is uh, fantastic. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've we've talked about sitting down, uh, doing something like this about the book mm -hmm. for a while now, and now that yeah. it is, is finally out and people are starting to put their pre-orders in, uh, I mm -hmm. felt like this would be kind of the perfect time to kind of dive into this and just get a little bit more insight into uh, your process of shooting for the book, some of your thoughts and feelings, especially at this time right now because yeah. you're getting ready to, to leave this, this city that you love. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's extremely bittersweet. Um, everything, all of my feelings and emotions are extremely heightened right now. Um, I just launched the book in the last 24 hours. I go, Maddie and I go up to New York in a few days to move, to collect our belongings. Our lease is up at the end of May. So there's just like a lot of, there's a lot of highs, there's a lot of lows, there's a lot of weird feelings that I'm experiencing um, for the first time and, and that I'm experiencing new, th so it's just, it's been a wild week, and I think it'll be pretty emotional once Maddie and I go up, because we've been here in Nashville um, for almost three months now, since kind of everything happened in early March, and um, we have not been back to New York to our apartment in that amount of time, and it, so that's been tough, and obviously that played a huge role into like us deciding to move to Nashville to be near family, but like as we go up there in a few days, um, it's going to be super... Um, yeah, retrospective, you know, it's just kind of us thinking about what we've done and accomplished in three years in New York, uh, New York City, but also what we haven't accomplished. And uh, it's going to be a really weird, emotional, beautiful few days for us as we do that 13 hour drive, um, talking about our experiences and things we've we've done together as a married couple there. Uh, and then packing up all of our things and then loading it up in a truck, a U-Haul, and then coming back down. It's going to, you know, because it hasn't felt like we've moved yet um, because we know that we still have to go back there to get all of our things. But I think it's going to hit us pretty, pretty hard, especially with like the timing of the book and like what it, this book means to me as, as an artist and as a photographer, but also the timing of the release with also the timing of what's going on in New York and, and in the country and in the world but also with us leaving New York City. And then obviously all of those things played together in um, the release, when I released it, the, the theme of the book, um, deciding to do uh, my first book on, on, on New York City. So all of those things kind of, it was just like the weird, perfect storm yeah. that led me. Cause like, and maybe, I mean, you've made publications before and um, on your first one, I, maybe this is just me or maybe you experienced something similar, but like I have just, been wanting to, I've been wanting to make a book for the last five years since Maddie gifted me my first film camera on our wedding day in 2015. And that has always been like the the, the Mount Everest of my dreams. Right. It's just like when I can like produce something physical and it could live in someone's home, that is the ultimate goal. But I've put an absurd amount of pressure on myself because someone told me years ago and it has just ruined me and haunted me. Um, since then is that you're never going to have your first book again. You're never going to be able to make another first book. Yeah. And so I was just so like nervous and um, self-conscious that I, I just was, I don't know, terrified of rushing that process or like the work wasn't ready or the book wasn't like I just, and so I just like made so many excuses not to do it or not yeah. to make the book. And, um, COVID-19 hit, I had a few hard drives of all my New York City street stuff. I wasn't taking any photos, I had no jobs. All I could do was to look at my past work. And that's like kind of what I chose. I could have been shooting around the house, but I chose to just like, let me put the camera down for a second. Let me look at all this work, see. And I wasn't even thinking of trying to make a book. It just kind of, as I started to go through all the work, I was just like, hold up. And then I thought about 
what was going on in New York. I thought about where we like decided to move and to leave New York. It just kind of, it, it finally fell in place. Like, yeah. The like theme, now's the time. Now is the time. It made the perfect sense, um, for me to, to take seriously this curation process and to put together this body of work. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, it, at, at some point you, you have to jump, you know what I mean? You have all you of those to. thoughts and fears where it's like, it's not ready yet, or I don't have everything complete yet, or maybe I should wait because that or was maybe always... I misspell the damn word sincerely. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Well, hey, man, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's part, part of it. It's <laughs> part of it. First Jeez. book, right? Yeah, you got to have something in there. <laughs> no, that's the truth, though, man. Like, yeah. you can always make excuses for, you know, it's not ready yet. Or what if I, if, what if I publish this thing and then next yeah. week I make something that would have fit perfectly? And exactly. it, 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 you know, it, that's always so like, first, that's always a fear. So your first zine was how long, how long ago did you make your first one? Uh, 2014. It was in the fall of 2014. Oh, so like six years ago. Almost so, six years. Uh, do you, like now looking at it, if you picked it up right now, are there things that are kind of like, not cringeworthy, but like, man, I really wish I would have oh, done this differently. That's, or I wish I would have added this or removed this. So, I mean, it's, it's night and day. I'm, I'm in the process. I have a, a proof copy coming in of basically doing a second edition of that. Uh, awesome. basically, you know, it's a mulligan because the first okay, one yeah. that it's all, it was all self-published and the self-publishing options back then are nowhere near what they are now in terms Got of it. print quality yeah. options. And I just, yep. at the time I, I just wanted to make something and I had kind of had those fears and doubts, but I just thought, you know what, I just need to get it out there. And I'm glad that I did. But in hindsight, there are so many different things in sequencing and laying the book out. Um, and then just the print quality as well. All of that sure. kind of goes into it. So uh, it, it's one of those things that, I mean, you just, you you can wait and, and worry and stress about it as much as you want. But at one point, like I said, you, you just have to jump. You know what I mean? And You got to. Yeah, and I think for, for you right now, that's this is obviously like a, a perfect time for it because mm -hmm. I think photo books have this really nice quality of making a time capsule, a physical thing that isn't going to be erased or deleted or lost in you yeah. know the, the digital it's space. It's huge. And it, it, it serves as a good time capsule for not only your, your personal life because this is – a chapter mm. of your life where you guys lived yeah. there, you know, and, and yeah. you talking about like what you guys were able to do in that time frame, it can serve as a nice time capsule for your own personal life. But at the same time, oh, absolutely. New York city in those three years compared to, I mean, especially right now, how different it is, but who knows what it's going to look like after all of this is over. You know, I feel right. like that there's a really special quality in, having something to preserve that time frame, you know, and, and focusing oh, on a, a specific community. I think that's, yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree more. And that's like, what was the beautiful part of this curation process is I was just kind of thinking of like a title or an idea or like, what's it, what's happening with this whole layout. And then just kind of it hit me, like, as we were deciding to move, like it is literally just from July, 2017 to February, 2020, this is, my time here this is what i saw uh and there's very minimal um uh, copy or text in the book i just wanted the the 68 final photographs um to speak for themselves and um, i didn't want to get in the way of of a viewer or of a reader um i don't want to uh i don't want to give um the interpretation to them i wanted right wherever anyone is at whenever they're digesting this book to have their own uh, interpretation. There's a little context in terms of just like the date, you know, this is the time frame when these photos were made, everything else is up to you. Take it how you will. And those are some of my favorite books that I have collected over the years. Um, the ones that don't have a lot of words. Um, I make a joke. Like I literally only read photo books. I feel like I'm <laughs> six years old. Um, to read a book with words just is so foreign to me. Um, and that's just, I'm working on it, you know, <laughs> give me some time. Personal growth. Um, yeah. So some of my favorite books, um, are those that, uh, don't have a, a caption to the photo or don't give me any kind of insight as to what the photographer was thinking, maybe a small forward or something in the, in the right. intro. But aside from that, like just let, I want to, I want to just have my, I want my imagination to run wild. I want to get lost. Um, in that work. So I kind of followed along that theme. Uh, personally, it was just like m some of my favorite photo books have a similar layout or format. 
um, in terms of uh, like the composition of the book, and that's kind of what I what I aimed for as well. I think it's it's interesting that like presenting photos in that way and letting people just let their imagination run wild. I always like seeing that because I feel like sometimes if you if you give too much explanation at the start, mm-hmm. you're really limiting how people can mm-hmm. interpret the photos and what those photos can mean to the viewer. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I, I mean, I've never been myself. I've only seen in a lot of different photos over the years, but uh, oh, yeah. I, f- I feel like there, there's no no better place than to just let people's imagination run wild than photos of New York City. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, am, I mean, because we just, all have, because we all have like a preconceived idea of what it's like, whether it's in the the cinemas that we've seen or like yeah. pop culture, like or other photographers that you follow that shoot in New York. We've all got an idea or an, an impression of New York City, um, and but now it's just even more so. And this is something I didn't even realize when I was like starting the curation process back in March. Obviously, COVID was you know picking up, and it was kind of we had we had no idea what the future was going to be like. We still don't, but. Right. Now, like I just got the first proof in today or yesterday, but to like actually like three months, almost three months into to to our new quarantine life into COVID-19, looking at these photos now and seeing how full the city is, the human contact, how no one's six feet apart. Yeah. Like to see that, dude, these, I cannot tell you how much more, um, beautiful these photos are to me now knowing that i can't see my friends i can't right. go back to new york right now and to experience it the way that i have the last three years like i had so much like plans and vision for uh new york city in the summer of 2020 and what i was going to shoot and how i was just going to like just shoot every single day for all summer and that changed in the matter of just like a week in the the beginning of March. And so to yeah. now look at these photos and to see that intimate interaction with no face mask, with no six feet rule, it just, I don't know, the photos are just hitting differently right now as I'm yeah. looking through the first proof. And I just, that wasn't what I was thinking about or I had, it hadn't hit me when I started in March, like going through the photos. But like now that we're three, almost three months into this new life and to, um, yeah, it's just, it's wild to see how much, um, how much has changed, especially in New York city. Yeah. I mean, life, uh, life has its own route that it's going to take and we never it know does. what things are going to look like. And, and I mean, it's for me, like always writing down ideas for photo projects and even just individual photos that I have in mind and, and trying yeah. to gather all of those thoughts and ideas and, uh, sometimes it's a good reminder that, you know, no better time is now because you never know mm-hmm. when you're going to lose the opportunity to shoot right. something like that. You know, maybe Absolutely. if this were to happen a few years ago, right when you got started, I mean, the the work that you have would have never existed if this 100%. whole pandemic would have happened just a few mm-hmm. years earlier. So you never mm-hmm. know when things are going to work the yeah. way they are. And, uh, you know, you, you just kind of have to take the opportunity while you have it. But uh, yeah. tell me a little bit about that kind of once once you moved into to New York City and, and you started shooting for this. I mean, I, I would assume this wasn't like a preconceived thing where you thought, OK, we're moving to New York. I'm going to start shooting for a book. You know what I mean? This this feels like a very organic thing that just happened as you were shooting what was in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that was uh, k- kind of going into it. Uh, July uh, 2017 is when we moved there. And um, I just was just so excited to because I a few years prior, so like starting around 2015, 2016 was when I really started getting into like street photography and that idea of um, or that avenue or lane of photography. Um, just before we moved to New York in July, um, I think it was earlier that year in January 2017, I bought my first Leica. And I had no idea how to use it. Even fast forward to July 2017, I was just like, what, how do I even do, like, just give me an autofocus M6. <laughs> yeah. Just please, somebody give me an autofocus M6. That's like, that's all I wanted. And so it took me a long time to understand um, that device and that machine. Um, so when I when I got there, I was just like, I was so, like being a small town, like yourself from Chillicothe, like I was from, I'm a, from a, a 1300 person town in Florida. Um, so the fact that I've now lived, gone from that, now living in one of the, the biggest and greatest and um, most beautiful cities on earth, 
was just absolutely surreal to me. And I was just everything, and it still is, man. And that's my favorite thing about New York. I'm still, everything is, um, everything caught my eye. And yeah. everything was new, everything was fresh. Even three years into it, everything is still new and still exciting, still um, visually and emotionally uh, stimulating. And I just, I ran with that. Like I just wanted to, and I, and I now like after, the book is launched and you know we've got a, a physical product and a dream like I cannot tell you like I just had to like convince my wife to just trust like let me because I wasn't making for three years I made no money shooting photos on the street specifically with film I was spending so much money so much time and hours and resources and repairs on something that I saw no profit like an from. immediate return no yeah. no 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 it was just like babe I, you gotta this I'm, I I find so much joy just being on the street and feeling the energy of the city um, around you and kind of getting lost within the masses and it just like the street and I as I started to kind of like study the greats that had gone before me um, and the greats that are still out there right now shooting the street like New York City when you think of street photography I could be wrong maybe the only other uh, city that when you think of street photography it might be Paris but like for the most part. It all starts with New York, I yeah, think. I agree. And that could be my my um, my immature opinion, but like when I think of street photography, it goes to New York City. So the fact that I was there, I just wanted to jump into it, and yeah. I and, and um, I don't know, man. And it just obviously good, uh, when I started, I, I never wasn't even thinking of a book. Like again, I was so uh, self conscious of my work at the time, and just like I didn't, I wasn't ready for a book. Like you know and I wanted it, but I just wasn't thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna, I'm gonna start my, my New York City I Love You project. You know, obviously we had no idea what was gonna happen uh, in March of 2020, but like I was just like shooting, grabbing rolls of film, going on a seven hour walk, walking 12 miles in a day, and just shooting <laughs> three or four rolls of film that day, and just like building it, building that portfolio, just go out and shoot. And then I started to, to meet my other uh, street uh, photography comrades. Uh, that love New York and love shooting uh, specifically on film in the streets. And um, we have created, you know, which I'm very sad to leave, but we've created kind of like a brotherhood there. Absolutely. And I think it's um, the street photography um, crew in New York is has become such a very special um, group of of people that I, I will miss dearly. Um, yeah, man, that's kind of was the beautiful thing is that like, I didn't have a book in mind when I started this. It was just like, I'm in a new city. Everything's new. Everything's fresh. Everything's exciting. And I just wanted to just shoot it. So whenever I would go move with my, with Maddie, <clears throat> with my wife to, to dinner or to grab drinks with a friend, I'd have my camera on me and I would Always. snap a few sh shots here. And some of them have made the book or whenever I was like, try to go really hard and shoot six rolls a day. None of those photos have made the book. Right. So it's just, it's wild to think. Yeah. Like looking back on the last three years and then looking at the book and the 68 photographs that have made it. Um, I remember where I was when all of those photos were taken. I remember what time of, uh, what part of the year it was, where I was personally, where I was professionally, where I was artistically. And so it's, it really, it truly is um, my love letter uh, to New York City. And um, I just love that uh, I'm just, I'm kind of, yeah, expressing how I felt about the city. It's not a goodbye letter. I'll be back to New York. You know, yeah. us moving to Nashville. In no way is this a goodbye. Um, New York will be a very crucial part of my photographic and artistic process for the rest of my life. Thankfully, Nashville's only, once we can fly again, or feel comfortable doing it, it's only an hour, hour and a half flight. Um, so we'll be visiting um, often, and I'll continue to build upon that work. Um, New York City has left a massive imprint on me um, as a man, as a, as a, as a husband, as a, as a friend to, to my friends there in New York City, and as an artist, so I'll be returning often for sure. Yeah, I I love that, man. I think that, one, it goes to show the importance of always having a camera with you and, and letting yourself, you know, indulge when you see a photo because of course. Some, sometimes it, it's easy to think, like, I need to carve out time specifically for photography. But if you can kind of mm -hmm. weave that into your day-to-day -day routine and just let yourself shoot yeah. anything and everything that interests you, that catches your eye, you never know where that photo is going to live one day because yeah. I, I, I personally have... I mean, I, I kind of have a, an ongoing project right now of like 
basically little uh, reminders if I see something mm -hmm. and I just take a quick photo. Maybe it's not something for a specific project, but it makes me think yep. about something, you know, and just kind of putting together a series of these little reminders throughout my daily life where I wasn't out going to shoot. It just right. some, something I saw See, and, and that's al a always thing. be looking, you know? Yeah. And I think, I don't know who said it. You might know, or I think it might've been a Magnum photographer, but there's that famous quote or idea of, um, the, like my camera has become an extension of myself. I, right. I don't know who said it, but someone, some goat. Said yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> um, and I, Kind of was like, oh, I like that idea. But now, like having done New York for three years and like really you being an M6 shooter as well, like understanding and believing in that machine and what it does and what it can produce, yeah. like that camera has literally become like it's so intuitive now. It yeah. is, it is, you don't have whether to think I take about a photo it or not. Just, no. Yeah. And that was like my favorite thing when I went out in the streets. Is just, I just felt so ready, focused, and equipped because that machine didn't get in the way. Right. It's not these, there's no fancy nothing. It's just, yo, it's, it, it's, it's you and it's what you see. And when that impulse is ready, you take the photo. And um, that camera has become such an extension of me as a human and as an artist. Uh, it, it's, oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss just being able to walk out into the streets of New York and feel the energy. It's a little different here in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to have to probably only go to Broadway to Honky Tonk <laughs> Lane with all those bars. Yeah. And so I might have to start a separate project there. So we'll see what happens. I was going to say, I'll be looking forward to that as well though. But oh boy. it's, it's, you know, like I, I always tell people when they're, when they're looking to start a project or they say, you know, I, I want to work on a project because it's a good exercise, but I don't really know where to start. And the first thing yeah. I always say is start with what you're interested in, start with what you love because I feel like you have such a stronger sense of care and and uh, just like focus and attention when you're when you're taking photos of something that you love, whether that be yeah. a community or, you know, mm -hmm. your surroundings, obviously, like with New York City or even just your family, right. anything that you can do that you have actual care into it, like that's going to make you shoot better. And I feel like that's a, probably a similar thing for you with New York City and truly it being like a love letter and putting into words uh you know would would be a lot but to be able to put those feelings behind the photos i mean that's mm -hmm. that's huge that's it man yeah because photography has uh, truly become uh the way that i communicate um and so to be able to just like and that's that, that kind of played into obviously the whole design of the book um the way that you see the front of the cover you know it, it, it's as if i am writing this love letter to new york uh, NYC, I love you, dot, dot, dot. I had a lot more to say. That is the photos. Those are the 68 photographs. Um, and we wanted to keep it very, um, yeah, very intimate. Uh, there's no there's no wording on the, the, the spine of the book. We wanted to feel like as if it, years down the road when it's in a bookshelf, it just it's like this old dusty letter that you pull out that you don't know what it is. And it's kind of this mysterious thing because it doesn't really tell you what it is. There's no photo on the front cover. And we wanted to play off that idea of like, I was there for three three years. This is what I saw. This is what I captured. These are my favorite things about New York City um, in a 68 photograph um, love letter. And that's just, I'm, I'm just really, really stoked with my buddy Aaron who designed the book. And uh, we, you know, he had some incredible ideas and I'm just excited how it turned out because I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to feel intimate. I wanted to, because um, I have felt that by reading others uh, reading other um, photo books, so I just if if I can do that, uh, we'll see. Once everybody gets it in their hands, um, if I was able to to do something like that, but uh, yeah, it was a big task, and it's very dude. I didn't, dude, it is like incredibly like like the vulnerability you have to go through to like make something like this and to like put it out there to the world is just absolutely terrifying um, yeah. and scary and nerve wracking. Dude, I was just like, I was having sweats like leading up to it. It's like, oh my, like what if, oh man. But you know, like you said early on in in, in uh, this video is like, you just got to jump, man. And um, yeah. yeah, I think it was, it was a good jump. You know, I plan to make oh, yeah. photo books for the rest of my life. Like they've collecting photo books and reading photo books have been the biggest, and I'm sure you can, you know, echo this, but it's been the biggest source of, growth and inspiration um and learning for me as as a photographer and i will continue to collect and buy photo books uh, over the rest of my life so i'm just yeah super excited that now 
one of my bodies of work has the potential to live in someone's home. That is the yeah. greatest honor for me as a photographer. I was going to say Print, on the same print, shelf. workshop. No, no, literally like. Yeah. Yeah, man. To have my book in someone's home is just the greatest, greatest honor. And I'm just absolutely yeah, blown away. Yeah, absolutely, man. Seeing seeing your your own book, something that you put a lot of time and passion and it's energy crazy. into next to another book that you might have on your own shelf. Like it's just a it's Doesn't a very surreal. Yeah. Yeah. But yep. it but it's true like the being able to study a photo book and there is so much noise in the world right now mm. in regards to photography, especially online. There's not only, you know, people shooting narratives with photography and telling stories with photography but even on places like youtube i mean it's just so saturated with anything and everything revolving around photography whether it be storytelling or what new camera has the most megapixels like it's just there's so much noise and taking a book and stripping away all of that distraction and noise there's so much to learn from that you know yeah uh, yeah, it's, absolutely. it's amazing though, man. But, uh, I, I, I want to talk a little bit more about as you were out there shooting, especially considering it's, it's obviously much different today, you know, than mm-hmm. it was. So when yeah. you were, when you were out there shooting, I know you've, you've shot a lot of photos and made some really beautiful work in places like India and Cuba and seeing those, mm-hmm. you know, in, in comparison to the New York city scenes, I mean, obviously the scenes are very different, but did you, did you find that you were like approaching the way you made those photos any differently on the street as you would if you were like traveling somewhere like that? I mean, wh- what was the kind of the biggest differences in terms of your mindset and just overall approach? Did it change much or was it all kind of just yeah. instinctual? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think in the beginning, it changed the most, I think, uh, the tail end of like I, I noticed a switch, the tail end of 2018 and the start of 2019. Cause that's at that point, that's kind of when I really got comfortable with zoning, zone focusing yeah. on my M6. Before that, I was just so frustrated and I was like struggling to like learn that language. Um, technically, like I've said on my YouTube channel, like I am not a technical guy at all. Um, and, uh, and I, it's, I have a hard time explaining it or even learning it. So once I learned that and I understood the beauty and the power and what was capable of zone focusing yeah. that, like I said, that tail end of 2018 going into uh, the, well, the summer and then going into 2019 it, that, oh my gosh, man, I think that was uh, the, the big turning point, um, for me, but I kept it pretty simple. I never really went out trying to make or to get a certain type of photo. That's the beauty, and I hope you get experience soon. You know, with everything going on in New York, but like, um, you can't. New York is so chaotic. Yeah. But it's a depending on how you view it and how you approach it and where you go, it's it's a, it's a controlled chaos. Um, and shooting the street every day, pretty much almost all of 2019 uh, and 2018, like I. I built these rhythms and I knew what time of day to leave. I knew my route. I knew where right. stop to get off at. I did a little loop-de-loop here, went up 6th Ave, jumped on West 34th, camped around on that area section on 7th and West 34th for like an hour, two hours, grab a few mimosas, you know, cut that edge, then go up north to Times Square and then hit up 5th Ave all the way up to 55th. So like I just, like I created these, these rhythms, this route to where I would, I don't know, man, and that was like so helpful for me for this project over the last few years specifically. Uh, and then like, I don't know. I, I mean, it's almost like you had a ritual, you know, as you were out did. shooting and, and that becomes mm-hmm. such a, like such a personal thing when you, when you it have is. a ritual of like, for me, it's a lot of going down back roads and pulling mm-hmm. over and shooting photos on the side of the road and then just like continuously driving and driving and looking around. So in a way, it's very similar to what you're doing, yeah. just in obviously very different circumstances. You know, you have your routes and your your places that mm-hmm. you're going to look for, and uh, yeah, there's yeah. something very personal about that. Yeah, I'm a very uh, ritualistic person, just personally in my personal life. Yeah. Um, I need those kind of rhythms uh, to just kind of keep my keep me sane, keep me focused. Um, so to have that in my my work life, um, specifically uh, on the streets, was just um, absolutely necessary and therapeutic. Uh, so much so that to where those those rhythms were um, were so 
pure and um, in tune that it it just be being on the streets literally became therapeutic. And I will say it's been very difficult these last three months not being able to um, partake in um, the street photography, just culture, life. Yeah, and, that, that um, it's just energy. not the same. Yeah, it's not the same, and I don't know when it will be the same. I have a lot of friends that are still living there, uh, street uh, photographers, that they're just, you know, it's different, you know, and they're like, man, I just can't wait to photograph somebody not wearing a mask. Yeah. So, like, little things like that, but obviously we want people to be safe, and we can't wait for New York to be back to its old self, and if there's right. any a city that can recover, it is New York City, some of the strongest people um, in the country there. So, yeah. um, but no, man, yeah, I think uh, I think New York just, like, helped – shooting on the streets in New York helped sharpen um, the technical side of yeah, taking yeah. photos on an MSX. So when I got to India and when I got to Cuba, I was just, I knew what to do. And Dialed there was no, in. Yeah, there was no lag in like, oh, oh, like how do I, New York, it was just like, it, it forced me and pushed me um, to know my device in and out technically because I am technically inclined. Um, I knew I know how to see a scene. I just sometimes I don't know how to work it. And once I finally figured out that formula, it was it was over. And now it's become so uh, natural for me um, that yeah. when I went to Cuba or in, embarked on a different body of work in a different location, I just carried those themes that I learned from New York into those work, those places and locations. And uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was it was fantastic. Yeah. No. That's that. I mean. That's that's the the beauty of having those technical things figured out is that once you have them figured out, you never have to really think about it or worry about it again. You can just focus more See, on what's, what's really important. And that's the beauty of this channel, man. I just watch all your freaking old <laughs> technical videos and I'm ready to go, dude. Yeah. I have a project. Oh, he's shooting on a, uh, Mamiya C330. <laughs> Let me go ahead and watch that one that he's already done. I and remember. Yeah. Go, bro. I remember linking, uh, sending you a text yeah. with a link to a video mm -hmm. and you had a question about one before, but that's, I've, I've answered my own questions. I'm borrowing a, a buddy's, uh, Pentax 645 right now. And I was Ooh, like, nice. I got it. And I was like, dude, I used to use this every day and it's been several years now let me go watch my own video on how to use <laughs> I, it. I went back and i was like oh that's right okay got it got it and then just <laughs> kept awesome. going um no no i i love that though i think there's there's something to be said for that energy of being out there on the street uh like yeah. that that it's interesting to think about that because for me never being there myself i can only mm -hmm. imagine and kind of put myself in, in your shoes and other photographers who are out there doing it. And that's what I love about it so much is because it is yeah. so foreign to me and it is something that I don't think I would be good at in terms of like being on the street. Like it just, I, I love looking yeah. at it, but it's something that I don't find myself like wanting to go to New York city to go shoot street sure. photography, but I love seeing it. And I, you kind of well, have I'm that. hoping this, I'm hoping this book changes your mind. That's the I, goal. I mean, I if would I love could, to. If I can make someone who has not been there feel as if they're there and can oh, yeah. feel the, 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 the mood and the emotion and the weight of the city, that's obviously the ultimate goal. Of, you know, and it's, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult task. And, uh, so I'm hoping to, hoping to do that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, specifically it, to Matt Day. Right, That's the only yeah. one I care about. Yeah. <laughs> Flipping through, uh, you know, a bunch of the different photos that are going into the book. I obviously can't wait until I get the physical copy like in hand. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just going through the photos that you sent over, I mean, there are so many different kinds of like slices of life. And I think that's just a testament mm -hmm. to just the the overall uh, variety that is New York City. You know what I mean? Yeah, so absolutely. For, absolutely. I feel like I would probably be overwhelmed at first with all of the different things. And I wouldn't know what I would want to shoot. Like as, sure. as, as an outsider, I feel like I would get there and just be like, I don't even know where to start. You know, it's like a, yeah. a kid walking into a candy store with, you know, floor to ceiling mm -hmm. of, of all the different options. So what were, right. Did, did you have like a central theme of things that you were looking for or did you just kind of let yourself run wild and, and shoot when, when curating the book or when shooting, when, when shooting after we'll, we'll talk about curating after, cause I'm, yeah. I'm very interested in that. But, but in terms of shooting, did you just, I mean, just let yourself yeah, indulge? Man. Yeah, man. Uh, I, uh, everything was available, available to me in that candy shop. There was nothing off limits. And that was the thing. It was just like, I just, because if I if, if thing with street photography, I think this is my 
personal philosophy within that medium is that if you go, you take your camera, digital film, a few rolls, whatever, SD cards, and you just go out for a few hour walk. If you've got a photo in mind you're trying to get, you're gonna miss so much. You've got these blinders on. I'm trying to get this one photo at, at golden hour on yeah. this one intersection of this dude in a suit carrying a briefcase, catching a shadow. Like if you're just looking for that one photo, get that one photo. But the hours that it's taking you to get to that location and the hours of just life and people passing you by because you're locked and loaded on that one shot, man, you're just, and I have done that in my own personal life. I've been, those blinders have been up and I've been trying to get that one scene or that one frame or that one composition. And I may have gotten it or a good chance I didn't get it, but I just, the course of that day or that journey of trying to get that one shot, I missed so much beautiful, ordinary, unlikely, mundane life that have just passed me by. And that's like my biggest thing is I don't have any expectation going into it. I've got my route. Maybe I want to spend an hour longer at Washington Square. But aside from that, I am a very spontaneous individual and I, I, I like to leave room for... Um, uh, just I guess the spontaneity of life that comes at you, and um, and especially in a city like New York, where just things, you know, so much of street photography in New York is just happenstance. Right. You being at the right place at the right time, and I can't tell you a lot of these photos in the book. I just happened to be there. I happened to be out. I happened to be walking. I happened to be present and aware of my surroundings, and I just was there. Um, but then there are times where I've missed photos or I've seen it a block down and like, Oh my God. And I just try to get over there and I just miss it. And that's also the joy is like those missed moments you get, um, suck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but also are really beautiful when you recognize something awesome and you recognize something unlikely and out of the ordinary and you, you see it happening or coming towards you and you can kind of position yourself kind of like Mary Witz has talked about how he'll see something coming towards him and you can, create the composition just right. by positioning yourself yeah. and having it a way and, and like having an understanding or a feeling of how the street flows. And once you do it often, you kind of figure out the dance that's happening on the streets. So yeah. for me, I don't have, I don't have a shot list in mind. Um, I just have like, okay, do I have enough film on me right, right. now? That's the only <laughs> yeah. thing I, like, where am I going to, you know, where am I going to eat for lunch? Where am I going to grab a bite? Aside from that, I just, I go and I let the, the city speak to me and I just try to be um, aware and present uh, and, and ready to take in whatever the city gives me. Yeah. Well, I, the, the point you made about missing photos, like they, they definitely hurt, but for me, it, it kind of, it's like an appetizer. It's like, I, I get, I get a little bit that, mm -hmm. that frustration at first, but then I'm like, okay, yeah. next time I'll be ready. And I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. like looking forward to when I can, kind of return to that uh but of course switching gears to uh like curation and going through mm -hmm. all of these photos and i mean i can't imagine yeah. the amount of photos you had to to sort through obviously right now we've we've got a lot more time and i think this is a big right. like introspective time frame for a lot of people you know uh, which is yeah. a re really really good thing uh, what was that like for you, that whole process? Did you, did you have any kind of game plan going in in terms of like how to find the photos or mm -hmm. were you really just kind of taking your time with it? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah. It kind of, like I said, it just kind of started off of just like, yo, I'm not taking photos right now. I had just finished a big road trip with my buddy Corey yeah. down in West Texas, uh, right before everything kind of broke out. So I had taken 60 rolls of, I was just, I was exhausted. I was like, I just want to chill quarantine's you know at, you know getting crazy and everything's kind of blowing up so i just wanted to stay home stay with here with my wife and just kind of focus on my health and fitness and just kind of just like clearing my mind um and so then i just happened to have actually my most recent two or three hard drives on me uh which i never usually have um because again all of our stuff is in new york the rest of my work is in new york and um and that was basically almost all of my new york photos for the last three years and so I just kind of went through it and it was kind of taking time and then that's when it hit it hit me so I had I first cut first curation I got it down to like a thousand photos and so I would take a break go back to the next day get it down to 600 take another break go back get it down to 300 and just keep making these cuts in the mind of like okay I think I might be able to make a book here let me just see if I can get it down to 100 and see what happens get it down to 100 
or like a, like 120 maybe. And then I made four by six, six by four little prints at CVS. Uh, got them horrible quality. Uh, picked them <laughs> up and just like for the next two weeks. This is like middle of March, end of or the start of April. Um, I was just you know taking over my my in-laws living room and just laying them all over on the ground trying to figure out a sequence trying to see this is both black and white and color um i didn't i, I tried to um i didn't want to make it just black and white or make it just color both mediums um mean a lot to me and um i think yeah i needed to have uh both i wasn't trying to have like a oh i need to have 34 color and 34 black and white right, right. i didn't have i didn't even have a number in mind I just wanted to like see my favorites and uh, Maddie was helping me with the curation process and I, I made sure to give myself space and time. I could only look at it for about an hour or two each oh, day. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to go back to it fresh every day. And so um, I would slowly start chipping down that number to, to 90, to 80, to 70. And then I got to the 60 range and that's when I, anywhere from like 10 to 20 photos that I would keep on the side that could have made the cut, but yeah. I wasn't sure. And then I kind of just started to just like, feel the flow of the book and I you know created it as if I was just like flipping through the book um and then I started to see a few similarities between some of the photographs um which in the book there are seven um pairs where there's a photo on the left a photo on the right the majority of the book uh, so that's 14 total photographs uh there's the majority of the book all Blank page on the left, photo on the right. That's just kind of, I love white space. I love what white space does in terms of viewing work. Um, and I loved the, just kind of the flow of it. Uh, as you turn to the right, it made sense for the photo to be on the right. But there were seven um, pairs, which uh, a few of them I posted on my Instagram. Uh, there's a common theme pairing those two photos together. Um, and so I kind of just let that happen. And then I just... Yeah, I don't know. I Maddie would tell me, "Oh, take that one out, add this one here, swap out this one and that one." And I just made sure to give myself plenty of time and space in between each uh, curation episode, just to kind of like go into it uh, with like a fresh uh, set of eyes. Um, and I, I did that for about two weeks, and uh, I felt like I finally had a a final cut um, ready. And uh, yeah, man, that's kind of how I got to that to that point. It was just a lot of coffee. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of uh, restful nights, uh, just in excitement, you know, that giddiness. I've never felt this before. Like making this this proofing and the sequencing process yeah. was all new to me. And I, it was so exciting. I couldn't wait to get up in the morning just to look at it again and just to see how the book flowed. But um, it's not in um, chronological order at all. It's right. just kind of how, as I was curating it and I was looking at it with like no other responsibilities, no right. other works, no other photo shoots, no other job. I just had full 100% um, focus on this curation process. And I, and especially with like uh, my family and uh, some close friends, like looking into that world with me, uh, I think we were able to get it to, um, it's the best story, the best uh, 68 uh, photographic uh, story. Yeah, I love that, man. And I think that that whole process kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about leaving some room for that spontaneity and, and not, not setting up too many like guidelines for yourself in the process where, okay, it has to be, you know, it all has to be like this. It all has to be black and white or it all has to be right. color and, and letting yourself mm -hmm. try different things and experiment with different things. I feel like so much can get lost in that similar to, again, what you said about the blinders. You, if you have, okay, the, the final result has to look like this and you don't mm -hmm. let yourself experiment and try out different things, you're going to potentially miss out on something that could make an even greater, you know, end product by, yeah, by, by the end of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. that's no, that's, that's, that's amazing, man. Uh, I feel like you and I could, could talk about this all day, but, uh, I want to give you yeah. a chance to, uh, kind of just share what you would like about the book before we wrap up. Um, you know, I mean, I feel like you've you've already shared uh, plenty about what it means to you and everything. But if there's anything sure. that you kind of want to tell people about the book and, uh, you know, what they're hoping to get from it or anything, uh, just go ahead. and. Yeah, man. Appreciate that. Actually, just yesterday uh, evening, I got the first proof in. Yeah, uh, this is an unbound, obviously, uh, no cover. Um, just so I could see the paper, the material, the way that the photos look, and I'm just absolutely jazzed. 
give you guys a quick teaser. Yeah, yeah. There, there it you is. Go. It looked incredible. That's, that's all you get. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just super stoked, man. Which is like how, yeah, like how there, there's a double spread there. Obviously, yeah. the common theme between these two photos are the smoke. Yeah. Um, so it's just yeah, the colors render really well. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited about uh, yeah how things look and the, the the feel of it, especially as you're like turning it. Um, so this was like possibly the greatest like that was better than any Christmas I've ever had in my entire life, which is like getting a physical uh, rough, very rough copy of it. Um, but no, man, I think I've said most of it. Um, I just it's it would be an absolute honor. It is the greatest honor for me um, as a photographer. Um, to have my work uh, live in someone else's home um, because I know the absurd amount of books that I have collected that you have right now behind you over your shoulder, <laughs> like what those books mean to me yeah. um, and how often on my timeline when I can return to those books for any given reason um, on any given day, to have that kind of resource um, has been one of the most beautiful things for me in my, my journey as a photographer. So to play a tiny, tiny role like that into someone else's life uh, is just absolutely um, monumental for me and humbling. And uh, so also already just the response I've had has just been absolutely unbelievable and um, extremely humbling and I'm just very grateful. For, so nothing much more to say other than this is just a, um, yeah, a, a simple love letter uh, to New York City, to one of the greatest cities in the world. And I'm very thankful um, that I, had the opportunity with my wife Maddie to to live there and to work there for as long as I did and it will, will be a very special um, place in, in my life knowing that this is my first uh, endeavor into um, uh, printed publication it's I'm learning a lot I've learned a flip ton and I know that this <laughs> isn't over as I've got to ship them all out so I feel like it's going to be a interesting few weeks um, ahead but no man uh, it's pre-order is going to be open for uh, a month, uh, so June 16th is when I'm gonna close it. Um, it's only gonna be a one run situation. I won't, there won't be a second edition ever. Um, so that's why I wanted to leave it open for that long. Uh, right. So people have time uh, to, to plan to get it. Um, uh, international shipping is available. Um, and so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a 68 pay, uh, photograph uh, book, 124 pages uh, on a beautiful classic classic soft covered linen military color finish and um yeah big shout out to my buddy aaron joel underwood who designed the book uh he is um incredible and did a great job with that as well so yeah man matt thanks again for having me brother you know i really appreciate oh you, yeah um, talking to me about this uh it's been um a wild 24 hours um i think yeah. i need another drink it's been crazy <laughs> man well, I'm super excited for you, man. Couldn't be happier. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to do this as well, just to kind of give people a little bit more insight into kind of behind the scenes of what went into it and everything. Because for me, I love not only seeing other photographers work, but hearing about their mm -hmm. process. To me, that is one yeah. of the most inspiring things. And I'm sure a lot of people are mm -hmm. going to walk away from this feeling really inspired okay. to, to hear you know, your perspective on working something like this. So, uh, oh, Joe, I appreciate, it, brother. I appreciate you being here. Uh, good luck with Thank the rest you, of Father this. Day. <laughs> good luck with the rest of the pre-orders, man. And, Thanks, uh, man. can't wait to get my copy in the mail. Awesome. Blessings, brother. Thanks, man. Cheers. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. I hope you enjoyed just sort of the open laid back format and that it wasn't too structured. If you did like it though, let me know in the comments down below and give the video a like. If you are interested in picking up a copy of this book, there is a pre-order link down below. I highly recommend picking one up. As Joe mentioned, this is a first edition and that is it. There's not gonna be a second edition or another printing. This is just a one-time thing. So if you're interested, now is the chance link down below. But that's it for today. If you guys have any questions or comments at all, of course, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We have new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.